people say, well, what and what pointed you to Brother Rose? Number one, God put him on my heart. And then ever since, it seems like it's working. Amen. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, so we thank God for Brother Tell Rose. You know, when it comes to Faith Promise Missions, one of the greatest names uh, in preaching Faith Promise Missions was a man by the name of Brother Stennett Ballou. I don't know if that name means much to you, but it sure does mean a lot to me. And uh, Brother Stennett's in heaven. And uh, he was originally who I was praying about to have preached this meeting for our church and then when I was praying about that and seeking God's when he got sick and eventually eventually passed away but uh, but brother Rose um, as far as I'm concerned you're our standing blue and uh, what God used that preacher to do for missions yeah, as, as a man who's an evangelist and never was a missionary but God gave him special insight into faith promise missions what God used that great man of God to do in churches all over is what I believe that God has used Brother Terrell Rose to do here and uh, our church and I think our missionaries owes an eternal debt to this man's preaching when it comes to missions and so I'm not, I'm not trying to just I'm not trying to, to, to worship a man but I do think with Bible says we ought to give honor to whom honors do. And we've been feasting at the table of spiritual riches this week and looking forward to several more days, a couple more days. But preacher, when I say this, I am honored to have you back and we love you and thank God for all you've invested in us in these years. Sure do love you. Amen. Preach to us, preacher. Amen. Amen. How many are glad to be here? Say amen. amen. Uh, my dad always said that when he got up to preach but he did it different he said how many are glad to be here raise your hand and and one day I asked my dad I said dad why do you do that he said that's all I know what to say when I get up to preach so <laughs> I thought that was a good thing to do so uh, uh, imitate my dad I appreciate the song uh, brother Borden you don't know Missionaries use YouTube to get fed. You know, I, I didn't have a church. And when I started a church in a small city there in Brazil, and I thank God that I was able to watch some services. And I've watched several services that your family have sung and it's always blessed our heart um, and uh, we're so grateful for that and uh, Drew so good to see you and your preacher here I didn't see him back there my goodness such a great church had the opportunity to preach a couple months ago at resurrection treated us so well thank you so much if you want to know a story of how God kept a person alive. You just talk to Drew, okay? I sit down and listen to his testimony, and I was just amazed. And I'm not, I'm not surprised God's called him to the mission field. Uh, it wasn't a surprise for me. Because if God spares someone like he did Drew, he has great plans for him. I guarantee you that. And Brother Roth, hey, always, always such a blessing. You know, I believe that the ministry that sees more people saved in a short period of time is Rock of Ages. And they do a great job. Uh, we started Rock of Ages in Brazil, and um, I tell you, uh, there is, if there's one serious mission board, it's Rock of Ages. 
I mean, they are serious about what they do. And I, I believe that. That's why I recommend them. Uh, I recommend Rock of Ages anywhere I go. In fact, a couple years ago, we had Brother Shoemate came, and uh, what a blessing. I mean, he's, he preaches to the juveniles, and man, big guy, but he has his size and his heart is the same size uh, for the juveniles of America. And I appreciate that, uh, Brother Roth, and what a blessing it is. But I, I do, uh, I think it's funny, sometimes we'll meet and he'll say, oh, well, I was in prison this week. And I always want to say, what did you do? <laughs> uh, but uh, I have, I have uh, God has given me some good, good friends with Rock of Ages, starting the ministry in Brazil and uh, helping them. And what a joy. I'm happy. Thank you, church, for all that you've done for us. I, I tell you. Uh, this is probably one of the best missions conference that I'm ever in. And uh, I tell every church that I preach in uh, what y'all do and just keep up the good work. And I tell you, uh, I was, I, I've been put a lot of responsibility on my back tonight to say that I replaced Brother Stennett Ballou. I'm, I'm a little worm close to that man, uh, but I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I'm going to preach. Oh, by the way, last year, each missionary hero was given a name. Does anybody remember my name? What is it, preacher? The Brazil Boss. The Brazil Boss. <laughs> the Brazil boss. Uh, that was uh, the the little. It was a, was she still here? The little girl that did that, or was she a missionary kid? Okay. Well, I still have that at my house and and I show that to people the Brazil boss can you imagine well, I'll tell you one thing when I go to Brazil they think I'm the boss because there is nobody in Brazil my size <laughs> oh me uh, one good thing about being this size is when you go somewhere they will never forget you uh, they always remember I I, I, I left the mission field, come back to States to work here as missionary uh, assistant director. But I go places there in Brazil when I go to Brazil every year and they're like, hey, pastor, how you doing? They do not forget me. So there is some advantages, okay? <laughs> so I'm the Brazil boss. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, I, some years ago, I preached this message, but I'm going, uh, the Lord all day, and uh, I've been preparing new messages for this uh, conference, and, and the Lord, just these three weeks have been... Uh, talking to me and, and impressed upon my heart to bring back this message, but I'm going to preach uh, three messages in one, okay? Uh, because I want to show you in the Bible, and as I said yesterday, we're going to go to a school of faith. You know, we saw Wednesday night why we do missions. Because on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And then yesterday we saw uh, how we're going to do missions. 
is having power. But tonight I want to show you how are we going to have uh, do missions and practice faith promise. And that's through faith. Through faith. You're going to have to have faith to practice faith promise. There's no other way. And before I read my text, I, I just want to share with you a couple of examples of great faith. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and chapter 2, we see a lady called Hannah. And I'm preparing a message on faith promise using this lady. She was a barren lady. She could not have a child. Uh, she asked God for the impossible. And if you look in 1 Samuel chapter uh, 1, that is not our test, text, but chapter uh, 1 verse 11, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord. That's faith promise. She said, Lord, I can't have a child. I, I, I am barren. And uh, if you understand the Bible in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, uh, if you had a child, you were blessed by God. But if you didn't have a child, you were cursed. And so she made a faith promise. She said, God, if you'll give me a child, a man child, I promise you, I'll give him back to you. Boy, ain't that a good picture of faith promise? <laughs> Boy, I tell you, I, I have people coming up constantly uh, when I preach revivals and saying, Preacher, I don't know how I'm going to do it. And I always say, with God, all things are possible. But you know, Hannah, she had to have faith. Faith. Well, look what happened. Then Eli answered her and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Boy, isn't that great? You know what she did? She had what we talked about last night, the power of prayer. And church, I hope, and I hope and pray that you have been praying, Lord, please show me how I am supposed to give this year to faith promise. You say, Brother Terrell, I can't do it. Hey, why don't you just be a Hannah and say, God, if you'll give it to me, I promise I'll give it back to you. Faith. Then you go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Yeah. And you see a man called Elijah. And he met a widow woman. And he met this lady because God had sent him to meet this lady. And uh, at that time, she had only one meal for her and her son and they were going to die well Elijah came to her and said uh, 
I want you to make a meal and give to me first. That's something you don't ask a mama. If you're a preacher, if you had only one meal and that was it, and your preacher came and said, God told me to tell you to give to me first, you'd probably look at him and say, go jump in the lake. <laughs> right? But God knew who he was choosing. That lady went and she prepared. She said, uh, this is all I got. Uh, she took a step of faith and she made a meal and gave it first to the man of God. And folks, if you read your Bible from then on, from then on, every time she would go to the barrel meal and every time she went to the cruise of oil, God took care of that lady. You know what she had to have? Faith. Now look at your Bibles. And this is probably the greatest faith story that we know. Look at chapter 14 of Matthew and verse 22. We'll start reading there, and I won't have you stand. It says this, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had uh, sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. Are we not in that shape now? Gas prices going up. Brother Borden knew that an evangelist uh, we get you get worried. Gas prices going up, food's going up, everything's going up. You know that's just about like that little ship being tossed here and fro. And, and I mean things are just not going uh, the way we really would like for it to go. But you know, Jesus did say, I want you to cross to the other side. And let me tell you something. When Jesus says it, it don't matter what comes our way, you're going to get to the other side. Amen? I know that for a fact. I can say that with all my heart as a missionary that I've been tossed here and fro, but God has all kept his promise. Amen. You know, I was sitting there, preacher, and I thought for sure, brother, Roth was a missionary a lot longer than I was. You said 25 years. 23. I've been a missionary 33 years. Well, see, I started when I was five. That, that's just it. Uh, uh, but 33 years, I, I guess I'm the oldest missionary uh, uh, here. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've seen God say, Terrell, I want you to go to the other side. And I'd say, listen, uh, I, I'll go but you'll have to take care of me. And let me tell you something tonight. God has always taken care of me. 
Well, you can look at me and tell that. I'm not starving. But look what the Bible says. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Oh boy. Saying, Is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. Boy, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. You know, when they saw somebody walking on the water, uh, they probably should have said, I knew he would come. I knew it. Boy, I, he told us we were going to get to the other side, and boy, I knew he was going to come. But they didn't do that. And don't act so spiritual. We probably wouldn't do it also. And so he came on the water and walking, but straightway, verse 27, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, Come. Amen. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. Can I repeat that? He walked on the water. To go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Mm, I like this. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, where didst thou doubt? Have you ever heard a preacher preach on the little faith of Peter? Yeah. Can I ask you something? How many of you have walked on water? <laughs> I haven't. I've never done it in my life. I might have tried. But guess what? Before I knew it, I was underwater. I never did it. In verse 32, and when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Faith, Hebrews 11 says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith expects from God what is above our expectation. That's faith promise. You know, uh, uh, every year, like I said the other night, uh, my wife, uh, we got together and she said, Honey, you're not going to like what I, uh, the Lord's put on my heart. And, and, and we told what God put on our heart and it was the exact same thing. And, and you know what? It was above our expectation because faith is to say amen to God. And Sunday night, uh, you're going to have to take a step of faith and say, God, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. Or are you going to say, Amen, God. I'll take that. You see, uh, faith is not worrying about tomorrow because God is already there. A man said this, faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Faith removes mountain or it makes a tunnel through them. That's faith. A.W. Tozer 
eloquently described an unusual characteristic of a Christian who lives by faith. Listen to this. A real Christian is an odd number anyway. He feels supreme love for who, for one whom he has never seen, talks familiarly every day to someone he cannot see, uh, expects to go to heaven on the virtue of another, empties himself in order to be full, admits he is wrong so he can be declared right, goes down in order to get up, is stronger when he is the weakest, richest when he is poorest, and happiest when he feels worse. He dies so that he can live, forsakes to have, gives away so he can keep, sees the invisible, hears the inaudible, and knows that which passeth knowledge. To live the faith means embracing a lifestyle that contradicts this life. In this passage of Scripture, in the book of Matthew, we find the disciples of our Lord trapped in a grip of a fierce storm. They find themselves in the storm, and Jesus comes walking on the water to help them. And Peter is challenged to take a step of faith. Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto you. The Lord didn't say, hey, be careful, but come. He didn't say, are you sure, but come. He didn't say, I'm not responsible, but come. He didn't say none of that. He looked at Peter and said, come on, buddy. Just come on. And you know, uh, 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 you know, Peter might have been a little proud. That's maybe why he went down. But he looked back and told the other disciples, look at this, guys. Wouldn't you? Check this out. He said, come. And, and the invitation of faith is given. You see, this week, this week is called faith promise. An invitation is given to the members of Beacon Baptist Church and he's not going to say, hey uh, you're up to yourself. You do what you want. I'm not going to take care of this. He is saying to every member of this church, come and take a step of faith to missions. Peter could have looked out of the water and said, hmm, should I or should I not? Hmm, maybe. No, I don't believe that. I believe when Peter said, Lord, if it be thou come unto uh, to you, and, and the Lord said, come, I imagine that immediately Peter stepped out of the boat and he began to walk on the waters. And oh, what a wonderful thing uh, to see. Oh, I would love to be there and see Peter walking on the waters. You remember in Joshua chapter 3, verse 13? God didn't tell Joshua, just go, I'll up and up everything for y'all to get to the promised land. Did he say that? No. He said in verse 13, 
And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. What did they have to do? They had to step and the sole of their feet had to touch the waters. And what did it take for them to do that? It took faith for them to do that. And the waters of Jordan stopped. And I believe he did the same thing. They were walking on dry land. To cross the river Jordan. But what they have to do? Jesus said, Come, put your feet there. You see, a step of faith. Uh, Sunday night, folks, you're going to have to take a step of faith and trust God to supply for this. Hey, I've been involved in faith promise all my life. There's never been a time that God let me down. But I always had to take a step of faith every time. Well, there's an invitation. There's a risk of faith. The disciples probably said, oh my goodness. He's going to go down to his world. It's a risk. You know what? I learned that when I take a step of faith, it is a risk. Because a lot of times, I make more bills than I should. Do I have a witness? I say, Lord, how am I going to do it? And God says, come. You sure? Come. You know, Peter, he could have stepped out of that ship and went underwater. It's a risk. And you know, we, we, we love risks. You go to... Six Flags, and you get on a crazy old machine. <laughs> yeah. My son went on one couple uh, about a year ago there at Carowinds, and he said, Dad, he said, you sit and it lays you down and you ride the roller coaster laying your head down going backwards. I said, you can have every bit of it. I've always said when I go to these places, I'm the photographer. I like to take the pictures. But you know, there's a lot of people that go on those, and man, they'll scream their heart out. They'll raise their hands, and they'll go around and, and do a screw and, and do all kinds of things and go on a thing that'll go up high and let them drop at 100 miles an hour. And you know what they do? They get off and say, let's go again. <laughs> But when the preacher says, let's take a step of faith. Oh, no, 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 preacher. You're asking too much from me. Huh? Oh, yeah. Hey, let's don't get personal here, preacher. Uh, we got to we gotta think over things. Hey, you don't think of things when you get on those crazy machines. Good, bro. It's good. It's good. But for God, 
Uh-uh. I can't risk it. You see, when you take a step of faith, God says, come. But there are risks in taking that faith. In our ministry in Brazil, and I've mentioned this here, and we were building a three-story building. See, in Brazil, we don't have the commodity of, of having a lot of land. The little land you have, you can't build out. Backwards, you build up. Well, we wanted a Christian school in our church, and uh, the school was growing. At that time, we probably had 50, 60 students. Today, we have 230 students in our Christian school. And God put upon my heart, let's build in the little property we have behind our church. My dad came to visit me. And you know, Michael, my dad, great man of God, great man of faith. And he went behind there, and they were building the building. And he looked at me and he said, son, how are you going to do it? Yep. And I said, dad, the same way you did it. Amen. <laughs> I'm just trusting God. Amen. Well, one of the guys that come, works with me, and, and uh, he came in my office, and, and he was all worried. And, and he said, uh, Pastor, he said, uh, the, the engineer said, we need $20,000 by tomorrow. <coughs> How many got $20,000 in your bank account for tomorrow? I don't. But you know, preachers, we got to act spiritual. Huh? Right? So I told the young man of our church, I said, God will provide. And he said, okay, and left my office. And I was like, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Listen to me. God said, Terrell Rose, you take a step of faith. Come on. I told you you could build that building. Come on, son. Just trust me. God is my witness, brother. Five minutes later, our secretary came in and she said, Preacher, she said, there's somebody talking in English and I can't understand. Would you talk to him? I said, absolutely. And it was a man in Michigan. He designed Chrysler 300 great businessman and he was on the phone he said brother rose i just want to let you know that a week ago i sent you a check for twenty thousand dollars amen do you know how long it takes for mail to get to Brazil? Seven days. The day that I needed that, he said, I sent it. You see, God's ahead of us. He's way ahead of us. He already knew that young boy was going to come in and say, Preacher, we need $20,000. And I was like, oh, really? Praise the Lord. We'll get it. And I was trembling in my shoes. But seven days ago, God, hey, whew, thrills my soul. Seven days ago, 
God nudged the heart of a businessman in Michigan and say, you see that man over there? He's my servant, and he's going to need $20,000 for tomorrow, or the building's going to stop. Oh, brother, let me tell you something. If I had a never taken that step of faith, I would have never seen God do what he did. Today, there's a beautiful three-story building with an elevator. <laughs> and every time I go there, I go up to the third floor on the elevator <laughs> just to tell the devil, see, <laughs> see, you wanted to discourage me from taking that step? Oh, folks, let me tell you something. Faith promise, there is a risk. But when God says, come, come, well, I'm preaching longer than I should. Will you give me 10 more minutes? I'll be done. There's not only the invitation, the risk, the adver adversaries. The Bible says that the wind was boisterous and he was afraid. You know, fear and faith, they cannot walk together. Or you have fear, or you have faith. When faith grows, fear disappears. General Lee said this, never get advice from fear. You gain strength, courage, confidence, by every experience in which you real, really stop looking at fear in the face. The adversaries. Adver, adversaries. Lastly, now I'll, I'll be done. The source of faith. Why is this my favorite point? I love this. I can't. Peter's looking to Jesus and he's walking on the water. I don't care what you say. I believe Peter walked a pretty good way on the water. Because, you know, my people in Brazil. They was always concerned with my health. And they'd say, Preacher, you need to walk every day. And I say, I do. I get out of bed and I walk to the bathroom. Yep. And they say, Oh, no, Preacher, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, okay, I do go a little longer. I go to the kitchen for breakfast. <laughs> no, Preacher, you don't know what we're talking about. You need to walk. You know what I'm talking about? When the Bible said that Peter walked on the water, I believe he was probably walking a good ways. And he was looking to Jesus. But then the wind started hitted, hitting his face, and it started kind of shaking him a little bit. Because when the Bible says the wind was boisterous, that means strong wind. And he began to look sideways and see the wind. And that is when he started to go down. You see, if I see my circumstances, I'm going to go down. Yeah. 
You get what I'm trying to say? If you see your circumstances, uh, you're going to go down. But you know what? I'm so glad we have a source. Amen. Immediately, Peter said, Lord, help me. Right. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand. Now, this is what I want to share with you. And I shared this about three years ago, four years. I often wonder how Jesus reacted when Peter was going down and he caught his hand. Have you ever thought that? You know, my mind is kind of, I think, more than probably I should. But if it was me, I probably would have got his hand and drug <laughs> Peter <laughs> through the water <laughs> so we could learn a lesson <laughs> to trust in me. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Huh? Maybe. Maybe Jesus said, Oh, thou little faith, come on. Put him on his back. And Jesus took Peter back to the ship. I don't believe it happened that way either. I like this. Ugh. I believe Jesus said, come on, Peter. Stand up. Hold on to my arm. And you're going to keep practicing faith. Let's walk. And they walked back to the ship. And the Bible says that when they got into the ship... You know, there's probably a disciple in there and said, I wish I had done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can. I've said when I've heard missionaries or people in the church say, you know, the Lord did this, and I'd say, oh, I wish that happened to me. And it has. It has. I've seen the Lord take care of me in miraculous ways. We had two missionaries one Sunday in our church. We had missionaries all the time. Hey, you know, I'm a missionary. I look for churches like Beacon. Right? Right? Yeah. That loves missions. Well, our church was like Beacon. I mean, when a preacher, when a missionary come, we give them a love offering. We'd give the wife a love offering. We'd give the kids a love offering. We'd give every one of them an offering. And I know what they do. They go out and tell other missionaries, you need to go to that church. That church is good to missionaries. Well, one day we had two on a Sunday, and God is my witness. We didn't have, it was the end of the month, we didn't have anything in our bank account to take them out to eat. It, it was rough month. Something like February is when you get less support. See, I've been in this for 33 years. I know every bit of it. And my wife, after f church that, that morning, said, uh, what are we going to do for lunch? I said, we're going to take them out to eat. And the church would pay for it. 
good. But then that afternoon, they were at my house. I'm sorry, pre. Oh, 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 that hurt so bad. Not the Brazil flag. Well, that afternoon, said my wife said, "Honey, we need to before we go to church, uh, you know, get coffee or something." And, and I got out my credit card. Now nah, I don't advise this. And I said, honey, just go by. Let's feed them good. We went to church that night. Lord blessed. After that, the young people came and said, preacher, we're going we gonna to go out? And I said, yeah, we are. We're going to go eat pizza. And we took them out to eat pizza. And I paid for it on my credit card. I don't advise that. I told my wife, I said, honey, we'll just trust the Lord. God take care of us. Michael, Monday morning, my dad called. <laughs> Brother Roth, you probably rem remember Brother Carlos Wood, where your, where your trailer is. Great man of God supports us. You know uh, the, the church and he called me and he said son he said something amazing happened last night in church now remember what I was going through the same Sunday he said all of a sudden brother Carlos Wood got up and he said I don't know why but God spoke to my heart to send Brother Terrell Rose $500. God said, okay, are you going to take that step? Or are you going to stand back and say, no, I can't. I can't. I don't, I don't have the money. I can't. But I said, you know what? I'm going to take that step. I'm going to be good to missionaries. And God sent me probably four times more than I spent that day. Amen. Amen. You see, faith, God says to Beacon Baptist Church Sunday night, you're probably already arguing with God, saying, God, I can't give that much. I can't do that. And God says, come. Is it a risk? Oh, yeah. Is there adversities? Oh, yes. But let me tell you something. The source of faith promise will keep you walking by faith. Preacher, do you practice what you preach? Absolutely. Me and my wife give the faith promise. I don't think she takes care of all the checks and, and all she does is give me the check and I put she puts it in an envelope and she says just put it in the offering plate. I don't ask her can we do it this month? Are we able? I just get the check, take it to church, put it in the offering plate. Because God said, come. But Beacon, you're going to have to take that step before you'll see God 
moving. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I'm sorry to take so much time. God help us. Lord, I have seen for the last three years, four years, Beacon Baptist Church take a big step of faith. Oh, that's, that's what they ought to do today. How many people from Beacon Baptist Church or the missionaries can say, Brother Terrell, I, I need to take that step. I'm praying in September we have our missions conference at Tabernacle. Oh, I'm already thinking, Lord, what, what am I going to do? God says, come, come. That's what I'm going to do. Take that step of faith. You know, when I went to the mission field, I was so excited to go. I didn't care how much support I had. I had 60%. And I went to my director. I said, please let me go. God will take care of me. He said, I usually don't do this, but you can go. I had to take a step of faith. Missionary, you're going to have to take a step of faith. I don't advise any missionary to go on the field under-supported. You need every bit you can get. Get 100%. But there's going to be some steps that you're going to have to take. And it's when Jesus says, come, take that step. you'll do that.